20 acres is all we got left for corn harvest 2020. Or don't want to touch tips though. That would be bad. Uh, let the gate open too much. Still rolling. Doing pretty good. Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Heart Tongue Family Farms. And today, it is Tuesday, December 1st. Happy December, everyone. 24 days until Christmas. I am just getting up to the farm, and we just started tillage 2020. Not too long ago, but we are just getting chiseling. Nathan is actually out in the CAT MT-865B in our Woolwich Disc Chisel DCR. Disc Chisel Ripper. I actually see him right there. He's across Deep Creek in our 110 acre McDonald field. He's starting that. I believe he has to go home to college today for just to return his books or whatever. So he'll be done for most of the afternoon. But we are gonna be getting done harvesting today. We have about 20 acres left. That is it. They harvested yesterday about 50 acres until we had a breakdown. So they just kinda, it was at seven o'clock at night. So they were just kinda like, meh, we'll just wait. So yeah, we're gonna go up and finish harvesting and hopefully I can get in a chisel this, after, this evening when we get done. But like I said, Nathan's just over there, just got started. I see he's probably made six or seven passes. I see the 340 Magnum is still here. It's ready to go. I think it's going to go down south here in a couple days, maybe Thursday or so. But hopefully maybe I can jump on this thing this afternoon and get a little bit of acres done with it. So Brian is finishing up chores. We got the dryer running right now because the wet bin is plump full. So the dryer is running. I, as you guys have kind of noticed, this is the longest my beard has ever gotten. It's my harvest beard. I am not going to shave it until harvest is done and deer hunting is done. Well, harvest is going to get done today, barring any major breakdowns. So come Tuesday or Wednesday after the deer hunting videos, this beard is coming off. Look at that mug. Let's find Pat and see what's going on. Alrighty, well we're gonna go up and start combining right now. We only got 20 acres left, so Pat, me, Cletus, and Bun are gonna finish him off. We're basically actually gonna go ahead. Cletus and I are gonna be hauling straight to ADM, so it's gonna be interesting. Pat's gonna jump in with me right now. We're gonna head up there. We're doing it. I got here a little early today, um, about 9.30. It was pretty frosty this morning. As you can tell, it kind of still is a little bit. And that made the ground kind of slick. Those first couple passes were kind of tough. I had to uh, lift up a little bit sometimes. The compacted spots, but other than that, it's running good. Going about five and a half. Got a little bit of frost on the ground last night. As you can see, there's some chunks of dirt. Not too bad. All right, just got up here to Zymets. Pat is gonna check oils on the 7088. 2588 has a small oil leak I'm gonna look into once Bun gets here. I'm gonna run grain cart until my uncle Bun gets here. And then, yeah, we're gonna get moving. There we go. Pat's checking the oil. I'm gonna take a quick Instagram picture of this. This is kinda cool. I'm gonna go check oil on the Steiger, make sure that thing's ready to go. Gonna be a cold start coming here soon. Right now, actually. Well, that machine never cold starts very hard. This one does. Let's check oil on this beast. Oil fill, oil check. On the lower side of it, but still good. We're gonna change oil on this thing over the winter anyway. Probably need the grid heater. Yeah, nope, no, we're good. Let's fire this unit up. A little cold this morning. Alrighty, so we are ready to go. I'm gonna be running the Steiger for a little bit until my Uncle Bun gets here, then he's gonna hop in his tractor. He really doesn't like the uh, Steiger very much. Just, it's too high up for him. He's a little bit older, so that blue tractor is much smoother, much easier to run, and it's not as high up for him. But I like the red tractor because I sit up higher and because it's got heat, heated seats. So yeah, I'm gonna run this tractor for a little bit until I get full and I'm gonna head uh, head actually day, head home, dump a little bit, fill up with dry corn to kind of get a more blended off 
um, dry moisture. Because the corn we're picking right now is actually around 16%, so I'm gonna dump half my load and then fill up with 14% corn that were dry. So I essentially have a 15% load, and then head to ADM, and then come back here and do it one more time. Because we only have about four loads left, somewhere around 20 acres. But, so let's get moving. All right, we're gonna get moving now. Like I said, it's just gonna be Pat and myself for a little bit until my Uncle Bun gets here. This combine's got a small hydraulic leak. We're gonna just fix it when we're done. But 20 acres is all we got left for Corn Harvest 2020 or Harvest 2020. So let's knock it out. Last field, we got a chunk here and a big chunk there. 20-ish acres, that's all we got. Let's get out and get a little footage of uh, Pat just starting up. You can see the black cloud of smoke. He just fired everything up. Time to go. Last day of Harvest 2020. Been a long grind, guys, but we are happy to be almost done. been extremely fortunate we're thanking our lucky stars that we've had so much good weather because this is December 1st guys last night my friends over in Indiana and Ohio got pounded with anywhere from 2 to 12 inches of snow that could have easily been us we could have made these last 200 acres absolutely miserable so we're thanking our lucky stars thanking God and thanking you all for coming along with us. Let's see if we can have an exciting end to our year. Or a not so exciting end to our year, I should say. Because it'd be nice if we just get this done without a hitch. So we do make hay on this farm. Like I said, we probably got 20 acres of hay or so through it in the low spots on the outer edge of the field. So you can kind of see there's a hay bale that Brian's actually probably going to be up here later today to pee moving off to the side. What's nice when we're up here though, is we can actually mow the waterways. We didn't do a great job this year of keeping all the waterways mowed, because if we mow water, well, let me start at the beginning. A waterway is basically, we put a grass strip in a low spot for when it, a heavy rain comes. When soil, when rain washes down, it goes in the low spot because gravity, when you, when you hit a waterway, when you put a waterway there, a grass strip, it puts a buffer. So any soil that gets washed down with that gets captured in this waterway so that we don't lose our soil. The inherent danger with waterways is that you can bend snoots and pull out snoots. We've broken a lot of snoots this year, five or six. And a lot of them were in waterways that we did not mow. But up here though, a lot of these waterways we did mow because we made it with hay. So next year we're hoping that with Nathan back, especially from college and potentially Curtis, we're gonna be able to get all of our waterways mowed. And basically it keeps the farms nice. Same thing as mowing your grass. Get down there and come back here. I would think that in the quad, we should get it all on. I would think so too. Opening up the field, taking out end rows, having to stop. It's not efficient, but it is what it is. Opening up fields are always so fun. We're basically gonna go all the way down and turn around and we'll take this way back. All the way in the back, in the north end of the field. Going up and down the hills. It's really rolly in, these, in this terrain. Like I said guys, this is even a, probably an average field for us. We do got some pretty steep terrain. And like the camera does not do it just as how steep this stuff is, but this is why we have that extra horsepower. Do we need 400 horsepower on a thousand bushel grain caught on a normal farm? Probably not. Do we need it on this farm? Yes, sir. Now we're unloading on the go, being efficient. Going about three mile an hour. Last end row of this field, wrapping his way around this horseshoe. Unload on me right here, then I'm gonna come out, go dump, uh, probably on Cletus's truck, because I just saw Cletus pull in. Here comes Pat. There we go. I gotta focus now. Can't go too fast in these hills and near these waterways. But I'm just getting up to the trucks. I'm gonna unload on Cletus, because I don't see Bun here yet. And I'm the only grain carter. Let's go ahead and dump on Cletus now. Don't want to touch tips though. That would be bad. Phew. 
made it. Forgot this tractor has a software issue that sometimes the EHR or electronic hydraulic whatever R stands for goes out in this thing. So I got a key cycle. So let's try it again. Because it takes electronics to, to flow the hydraulics. And an electronic signal tells the hydraulics to flow. So let's try it again. Speed unloading now. Got the back hop, front hopper pretty well full. I'm just working on the back hopper. And my Uncle Bun's not here yet, so good thing I chose Cletus. Let's see if Pat will guess right. He's just kind of doing some choppy rows right now. Looks like he did. A lot of our farms are at the farm and contour, so we can't just go strike a GPS line, just go back and forth and back and forth. Because that just leads, that's a recipe for erosion. So like for this farm, for example, it's got a big long hilltop. So what we do is we basically obviously do our outside rounds and then just kind of follow the contour of the ground which is why it's called contour farming so he kind of wraps around this hillside does like four or five passes and wraps around that back hillside does four or five passes and then he just starts going back and forth from there and then has a couple filler passes like right here it's kind of interesting and if i get the drone up in the air i'll kind of explain a little bit more because you'll be able to see it better from the air bun just got here perfect timing we'll give him 15 minutes to warm that tractor up by that time i'll have almost a mostly full cart and then I can head out or get in my semi and wait for Bun to fill me up the rest of the way. There goes Cletus and I'm just emptying out my cart into this truck because this way this truck will basically hold another thousand bushel by the time I empty it out it'll only be a hundred bushel that I put in. So Cletus is going to head home dump half his truck into the wet bin and then fill the rest up with dry corn and I'm going to do the same thing. And so I'll head back and catch Pat. I guess Bun was really itching to go because he really should have let that tractor warm up some more. But hey, what do you do? All right, well, this gives me a little bit of time. I'm gonna go take a look at that hydraulic leak and see if I can kind of figure out the issue and maybe even get it fixed with Bun's tools. Go ahead and shut this unit down. Come here, Pooch. Come here, Pooch. Okay, don't come here. Fine. I never liked you anyway. Pretty easy to see where the leak is at. Right here's a hydraulic oil. Oil there, oil up there. I'm guessing it's coming from a line right there. So I'm gonna set the camera down and investigate a little bit because uh, I'm gonna get a little oily. And I don't wanna get you guys all oily. Cause I care about you guys, don't ever forget that. So I think the issue is one of these lines right here is probably loose or blue and O-ring. So I'm just gonna try and kind of source it down. I'm probably gonna start it up, just gonna see if I can see oil squirting out. But those lines definitely look wet. If I was a betting guy, I bet it would be this one. Well, I just opened up the forbidden book, the operator's manual, which is back here. Just opened that thing up and I cannot figure out, it doesn't say what this valve block does and what all the different uh, things it controls. So I think I'm just gonna have to manually figure it out. I'll probably wipe down the area and then just start messing with things so I can get it to leak. Or if it just leaks normally. There's my great uncle Bun. This is basically my grandma's brother, Bernard. Or we just call him Bun, or he goes by Bun. So he's gonna dump in my truck. Yeah, so it's definitely this solenoid that's leaking. So what this does is it basically uses an electrical signal in this valve block to open and close a flow path for hydraulic oil. And it basically it uses just a, pl a standard plunger to uh, actuate that. And there's an O-ring usually in here. That's my guess is what's bad because just sitting here, it's not leaking, but when I turned on the machine, the separator, it started leaking. So let's turn it. I'm just gonna let it run for a couple minutes, see if I see it leaking. Then I'm gonna turn the separator on. And all right, the machine's been running for about five minutes now after I wiped it off. I just ran, got the full idle. It's still not leaking. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's turn the separator on. Let the separator run for a little bit. That's basically the rotor, the sieves, chopper, spreaders. That's everything back there. So let that run for a little bit. Then uh, nothing happens there for like two minutes. I'm gonna turn the header on, see if that does anything. All right, so I think I'm at the root of the issue. So the issue that I'm seeing is separator on or off doesn't matter, but when I raise the head, nothing happens. So raising the head, but when I lower it, that's when I see an oil streak dripping. Watch. Nothing. <laughs> Not a big one, but it, I think that's what it is. Job well done. Let's go ahead and shut this thing down. Well, there's the leak, guys, so let's go ahead and shut her down. Pulls her up, I should say. And let's, I don't know, you wanna get the drone up in the air? Sure, why not?
guys just saw in that drone footage, my Uncle Bun filled me full. It's time to get out of here. Let's get out of here, then we can get back, because Pat's got a game tonight. I think he's going to be out of there at 5. So I hope that I can get back, go home, dump a little bit, get filled up with dry corn, head down to ADM with a load, sell that load, and get back here to get filled up one last time, last time of the year. Go ahead and dump this. All right, time to go grab a bite to eat. You're getting so big, little kitty. Yes, she is. Yum. Grandma's dinners never disappoint. Kitty, 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 I will force him to like me someday, maybe. All right, let's go fill this truck up with dry corn and of course, uh, let the gate open too much. Dang it. 